so that the ax sticks into the wood with the grain. My questions about using boss is does it attract lights? Crazy thunder. Amazing what you can do with three teeth. All right, we are going to talk about wood shrinkage in context of a, a wooden wall. And we're also gonna talk about how I put this top piece in, how I finish the wall. So. As you can see there, I'm getting this gap. That's because the wall is shrinking as it dries. And that is totally fine, that's to be expected. This is just a placeholder. I just wanted to kind of get it in and get the visual knowing full well that I'm gonna to have to top this wall up, which is why I didn't do these two walls. But I was just really curious to see how much it was gonna settle, so I, I did a perfect scribe, made it fit nice and tight last fall, and now we are here a uh, full year later and it has shrink, shrank about two and a half inches. Now it doesn't quite look like two and, a, two and a half inches here, but that's because this log kind of sits over top of that one a little bit. And I'm again, I'm measuring about two inches there. And then I also have a gap, uh, let's see, right here. So that is because when I was building up the walls, I wanted to create some structural support. These posts were just kind of open-ended and so if I put too much force on the walls, the posts were going to start to splay this way. So I did have them braced, but as I went up, I also screwed a few screws into the post as well. Knowing fair well that once these are all dried and settled, I'm going to be pulling this all out for two reasons. One, I'm going to pull these out because I still need to sand them really good and give them a stain. And I also may want to run some electrical in between them anyways. And because they just slip in, it's really no big deal just to pull them out and and do what I need to do. Now that the frame is all built around it, these walls can just pop out real, real easy. So let's talk more about um, how much this wall shrank and what you can expect. So this is a seven foot wall. And um, like I said, it shrank about two and a half inches. So if you divide that by uh, seven feet, that gives you about a three eighth of an inch per foot. So for every foot of wall you have, it would shrink three eighths of an inch. And that is using logs that have already been uh, seasoned for about two years. So they'd already dried for about two years. And so I'm losing about three eighths of an inch per foot. Um, from green logs, it's more like half an inch. So for every foot of green log you stack, you're gonna lose half an inch of height. So something to keep in mind if you're building with green logs or even partly seasoned. You know, some of these logs uh, were felled all the way back into 2018 and I put them in in 2021. So some of them even had three years to dry. And so I would say that, you know, a log that's about, you know, anywhere five to seven, eight inches thick, it takes three to four years to dry out. And the other thing to consider is uh, your environment. So we're in quite a humid environment. If this cabin was transported to a much drier environment, we might see even more settling, more shrinkage. So 
Um, now, let's talk about this top piece going in. I get a lot of questions about that. Is this the best way to do it, the way I've, I've done it? You know, I'm not totally sure. Um, definitely there's more information about building a housing and then building the wall up inside that housing. But I was really just curious to learn myself how much this was going to shrink and being the carpenter, I wasn't too concerned about having to uh, add a little bit more later to, to fill up the, the depth. But I'll show you how this fits in. This top piece here is simply just two pieces. Screwed on both sides. So it just sits in like that. And the benefit to this method is that when I do this again, you know, my, my walls sit more like that when it's first done, when it's first put up. And if there is any more shrinkage, it does kind of allow for some settling to happen. So if my wall is built up like that and my wall settles, all I have to do is take off the screws and just rotate this a little bit to fill some of that gap when we're fine tuning, maybe like next fall, I might have to do a little bit of that. But for now, I am gonna have to put in uh, another thin log in here, or uh, we'll see. What I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do now is pull out all these walls, all these pieces, all the way down to where I have that, that brace screw, and then just try to pound them down, do a little bit more scribing, fine tune it, and see how big of a gap I can build and then put in another log, and then put in another little adjuster piece as well at the top. So we just had a little gathering here of acoustic pickers and uh, some singing, and it was a really nice time. So I'm gonna share some of that footage with you right now so you can kind of be part of the, the experience here. So the cabin is not just about building a cabin, it's about welcoming people in, and sharing it with them, and having a good time. So we definitely accomplished that today with, uh, with some live music. Everybody had a good time. One of the nice things about these wall structures that just pop out is that if you feel like you've got mice living in your walls or ants, you can just pull out the wall and in investigate. Okay, so here's where my first screw is. And that explains why there's that gap there. So this piece is screwed into the post. Take those screws out, this is gonna pop down and then We'll rebuild it back up. The streets are windy and the subway's closing down. Gonna carry this dream to the other side of town. Walk that line, so on a phone. Gotta spend your whole life.
I really enjoy sleeping up here, having it being open on three sides. Birds waking up in the morning, it's fully submersive feeling of sleeping in the forest, but yet you're off the ground so you're not worried about little ground rodents and animals and bugs. Got a nice solid roof over your head so you're not worried about the rain, but you get to hear everything that's happening in the forest, all the wind, the breeze, the sound, if there's rain, everything like that. It's a... Uh, Pretty, pretty peaceful. I have really good sleeps out here. This is probably the fifth time I've slept under this roof. Maybe, maybe more. Maybe seven. And uh, I always sleep really, really well. There's some serious thunder there. I haven't showed you the axe throwing yet. I'm gonna do that in a second. So this is a little axe throwing target I made. Let me show you around it. It's, uh, it's actually pretty cool. So from the front, I've got the vertical boards so that the axe sticks into the wood with the grain, right? If the boards were going this way, the axe wouldn't stick in. You might need the, the grain of the wood to go the same direction as the axe. So when the axe hits, it splits the grain and sticks into the wood and doesn't just bounce out. So those, those are just uh, boards that I milled. That's uh, mostly white pine, maybe I think a few tamarack. And then what I did to build the structure is I just sandwiched it between the trees. So I, I put in little braces. So I put a, actually a bottom piece here just so that the logs wouldn't fall all the way down. And then I just braced it on the top and bottom and then filled it up with the logs. And as I was going, I just put some big screws. Well, they're hidden. They're hidden underneath this board here because I don't want my ax to, to hit the screw. So I, uh, I screwed this post through this log into the tree and then filled it up and did the same thing up here. And then I covered those screws with these plates. And these plates are here mostly to protect all the screws that hold these boards on. Uh, you can see by the, the marks here that people sometimes miss the target. And if they had, if I didn't have this plate up here, they would have hit these screws and that would have dulled the ax a lot more. So that is, uh, is the design. It works quite well. It's got a nice strong log back wall. So when my target boards break out, the ax is not going to go through the target. For safety and then I can just replace these boards so to replace the targets when they get destroyed I just ta take off this two plates replace the board that's wrecked and put the plates back on and I'm good to go again so this has been a lot of fun a lot of fun and a lot of people have never thrown an axe rightfully so and uh so when they get out here and they get a chance to throw an axe, they certainly feel like they're living the timber life. So when I talk about needing to peel the bark, otherwise the bugs get in there, this is what I'm talking about. This is all sawdust from this hole here. I can push in and you can actually feel the indent in the wood. 
and you can see the sawdust all the way along this tree. So if I don't peel the bark off my logs, then the bugs get in there and eat away all the sapwood. So that's why I'm peeling as soon as I, I fell them. wondering why I've got three cans of paint here, well, four, five. This is my reference of the mixture that I have created using three different colors of stain. When I was picking a stain color, I really couldn't choose what I wanted. There was nothing that was perfect. And so what I tried to do is match the color of the tamarack needles when they fall in the fall. And so I ended up using three different colors here and I mix it 40%, 40% and 10%. So I'm gonna mix them all up into this container and then start staining. I'm also adding a little bit of water um, for two reasons. One, stain's really expensive, so I'm trying to spread it out, but also I kind of like a bit of that natural wood look and uh, I don't want to overpower it too much. So. This just gives the stain a little bit of a tint, a little bit of protection, and uh, also still keeps a bit of a natural feel, so everything kind of blends together. It's important to put the spline pieces in section so that you can just take a section out you're not having to lift the log all the way up to the very top so this is also what's going to make it really easy to do add-ons and renovations you can just pull a wall out imagine if you could do that in your house and you could just take a wall out and not think about drywall and studs and all the stuff that's behind the wall and just pull your wall apart so I can see here this log is resting a little low, lower than the top of the screw, so I can tell that this log has slid down in the screw, which means it's working this way. The log is still allowed to settle this way, but I also got screws in the two ends, and that's why this is where I've got that gap on the other side. So I'm gonna pull these out.
So since I took the whole wall apart anyways, I might as well experiment a little bit with some moss insulation. The logs are nice and dry, they've been settled. I probably won't take the wall apart again until, well, who knows when. So I might as well just put the insulation in now. Uh, this is moss that I picked um, in 2000, maybe 2019. So I dried it pretty good. Well, dried it as best I could. Pretty darn dry. And now I'm just storing it in this tarp, ready for the day I use it. I'm curious to see if any mice have got in here because let's see. That's one of my one of my questions about using moss is does it attract mice? I see something in there. Cause obviously you don't want mice living in your walls. And I think the answer is yes. I think there's a mouse nest. I would have guessed that that was brought in by a mouse. What is it? Can't even tell. You know what it is. This is hair from a beaver pelt. I saw the mice were chewing, chewing apart a beaver pelt and it looks like they came and made a little nest with the hair from the beaver pelt. No mice in there now. Does it smell? It smells just like moss. Some crazy thunder, can you hear that? Nice and sunny, but yet yeah, thunder's roaring. Okay, how's that look? I think there's some fine tuning I can do. The thunder is right above my head, just over here now. I'm starting to wonder if this was the best day to take out a wall of the cabin. Despite it being super sunny, the sound of this thunder means I might see some rain. So I'm going to start packing up and uh, just be ready in case it comes a storm. storm started to taper off. I can hear the thunder now in the distance. My fire managed to stay going through the downpour. But I also noticed here's a good uh, vantage point to see the road that I'm building coming in. You can see in the distance my Jeep and a bit of a clearing there. So that's the, the road that I've been building to work my way into the cabin. At this point there's no vehicle access in here but uh, I'm building that slowly and work my way in. And also, uh, no drips in the roof, which is great. Everything was looking solid, so even without my metal roofing on, I've already got a fully waterproof layer just by using the, the tar paper. Well, actually, when I did put the, the roofing felt on, it, uh, it did have some drips, but I went in there and just uh, sprayed in any of my holes or staple marks with uh, a black flex seal, a waterproof water sealant, and now it's completely drip free, so even if Heaven forbid my my metal roof fails, which it won't. Um, I've got uh, a water protective layer already already up there, so everything's working well. And as quick as that storm came on, it's gone. Still pools of water on the platform, and yet sun's shining bright. Storm is gone, and it's time to rebuild this wall. So I'm just going to go back and give everything I described. This particular piece. Although I did mark a high point on the edge over here, 
I think I got some work to take out in the middle underneath, so I'm going to chainsaw that out. See if we can get this logs to sit nice and even all the way across. That feels good enough to me. So I thought about putting the moss I have between these logs, but every time I walk by it, it reminds me of the smell of a chicken coop, which we used moss in the bedding. And uh, growing up on a farm, smelling the chicken coop was one, not one of my favorite experiences. So I think we'll just pass. I don't need to be reminded of the smell of chicken coop every time I come to the cabin. I should probably mention here that the reason I have to do all this work right now is not because these logs have warped and twisted or anything. It's simply because I just didn't do a very good job the first time. The first time I was doing this, I was still kind of getting my technique down and I, I just could have done a better job. So now that I'm putting it back, I'm just doing a better job. They might have twisted a little bit. There might have been some drawing that, that changed some of the formation, but I think for the most part, uh, I could tell by the way that I didn't come in sharp enough on the sides that I just didn't do a good enough job because I hadn't had enough experience yet. That's just one of those things you learn as you go. The other thing, uh, if it looks kind of funny sometimes the way I'm hold, lifting logs up, if I'm, it looks like I'm kind of babying the shoulder, I am. I, I dislocated it in the spring and uh, you know I recovered to 75% pretty quickly and then to 90 took a little longer and I never really got to 100. And then when I was felling and clearing that area uh, for the new road, it really started to, to hurt it again.
so I just measured this little gap there. When I cut this uh, two by four out, the spline, I cut it flush with this log, and now when I measure it, there's about an inch there. So that means between the screws I took out and the adjustments that I made, this wall settled another inch. So uh, that probably means it was worth doing. That's an inch worth of airflow that could have got through the wall. But uh, hope, I mean, hopefully I'm back and I can finish these walls. But but uh, just in case I'm not, my shoulder's feeling a bit warm. Bit, bit, a bit of pain there, so I'm going to go home, rest it, go to my physio appointment and see how that goes. And, uh, and just in case it's recommended that I take a little bit of a break, um, I'm just going to say uh, thank you for watching. And uh, we'll get these walls closed up in another video. I also have my metal roofing arrive, so I'm going to try to get that on the cabin soon. But uh, anyways, thanks so much for watching. Be nice to people, be nice to our earth, and see you in the next one.